murders, drugs, gun violence, claiming a youth at alarming rates to see a neighborhood go from sugar to shit practically overnight has led many long-term residents to the question, is it time to leave the woods? Situated in the middle of Chicago's South Side, Community Area 68 and 7th District, lies the Englewood area, infamously known as the home of Dr. H. H. Holmes, one of the first serial murders in America. His hotel was located at 63rd and Wallace and the scene of most of his crimes. The story was featured in Eric Larson's best-selling book, Devil in the White City. Crime is nothing new to the area. Although overall crime is down in the area, homicides are up 12.8%, according to the crime statistics released by Chicago Police Superintendent Jody Weiss. Almost 40% of the murders were gang-related, and 46% involved known acquaintances. The school systems in Inglewood have taken a beating. Those who have survived the violence-plagued streets will manage to graduate, possibly the first in their family to do so. In a survey of 40 seniors at Robeson, two-thirds say they had friends who had died violently. The urban schools go through a great deal just to get students to graduate. Counselors and teachers have helped students find shelter for themselves and their families, visited students in jail, and encouraged teenage pregnant mothers to continue. Sitting in a gang war zone, peace is few and far between. For many, school is the safest place for them. Every time a CPS student was killed this year, Father Flager and activists would gather outside of the Thompson Center to rally against gun violence. It would be one of the many rallies to occur. city from becoming immune or accustomed to our children dying. Amen. July 21st, another freshman, Hyde Park student, we're going to enter a freshman year, Percy Rounds is shot and killed on his porch. Last night, four people shot, three killed last night in the city. We're down here because 55% of the suicides that happen in this country happen for those that have guns in their houses. Three to five times more people get killed in suicide to suicide who have a gun in the house than not. We're here because it's more likely for a gun in the house to harm somebody than to protect somebody. We're here because we find that in our neighborhoods, it is easier to find a gun in our neighborhoods than it is a grocery store. Something is wrong with that kind of reality. Why we're here because we want people to be outraged that children are dying in the city of Chicago and cities across this country. You should be outraged because somebody died. It's not a concern whether you're safe at the taste. Are you safe in your neighborhood? Yeah. Are you safe yeah. on your porches? Are you yeah. safe in your backyard? Yeah. Are you safe in your school? That's yeah. the outrage. And so we ought to be more concerned about death than we are the safety 
of just people who come downtown to the city of Chicago. We need to start planning for the future of our children and not for the funerals of our children. We need to stand up and ask for common sense gun laws and push the legislators and change the mentality of the youth around the city. I'll tell you what's on the NRA's mind. Money. The gun manufacturers. Money depends on guns being sold. All the statistics in the last five years show that legal gun owners and gun collectors are not buying guns like they used to. So who's the number one consumer of guns right now? The criminal element. So if they want to be rich, they got to keep guns accessible to the streets. So it's all about money. Churches are being constructed at a record pace with over 10 in a two block radius. Religion does not seem to be the answer for Inglewood. Preachers and pastors are encouraged to take it to the streets. Inglewood has seen a drastic change in property value and upkeep as well. $600 million were allocated for the rebuilding and revitalization of Inglewood. Many residents are still waiting for the progress to take place. For many, the outlook for Inglewood is bleak and hopeless. The future for Inglewood right now is genocide right now. And they want them to kill each other off so they can rebuild. This is just a true story from what I see because I don't see too much of nothing being done as far as um, stopping what they need to stop over there. It's still flourishing, it still goes on since I've been knowing it, and it's still going on, but in the same token, they, they're ready to rebuild and relocate re, uh, people from over there, and, and they put money into the area now, and a lot of people are not gonna be able to afford it wood, pretty much, because you know it's close to the downtown area, it's close to the, uh, to the train tracks, and um, a certain group of people you know, like that area. It's not really safe for the future. You should have, um, you should build some kind of a community center that the kids can go after school and then they won't be out on the street getting armed. They want to live! They want to live!